We'd be poor without the Muslims. It's good to have them around, but in a smaller concentration. Shilling words from the man they called the butcher of Bosnia, General Ratko Mladic. The snide humor masked his killer instinct. It defined Mladic, and it made him an uncomfortable man to confront. And we'd see this preening smile again and again as the war unfolded. Indeed, the Muslims, the Bosnian government says, I'd been covering the Bosnian war for more than a year by the time I met him, living in this shelled, sniped and besieged city of Sarajevo. A year of witnessing the ferocious war machine that the Bosnian Serb commander had unleashed, and he did not like my reporting. Uh, What's the lady's name? Uh, Christian. I like Kennedy's Christina. <laughs> it won't be difficult for her to understand because when I saw her first reports from Sarajevo, I was very angry. Mladic was commanding the Bosnian Serb military mission to carve out their own ethnically pure republic and join it into a greater Serbia. This was a daily occurrence, dodging bullets as we covered the unfolding tragedy. For the Bosnian Muslims, the villain was clear. They're, you know, your own people and your soldiers, to them you're a great man, you're a hero. To your enemies, you're somebody to be feared and somebody to be hated. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Very interesting question. Both things you say are correct. Prosecutors say what Mladic believed to be his greatness was in fact ethnic cleansing and genocide. It would reach its climax with the massacre at Srebrenica, July 11, 1995, more than three years into this brutal war. It was meant to be a UN protected zone for Muslims when Mladic's forces overran UN positions and invaded the tiny enclave, they handed out candy, and General Mladic promised the townspeople they would be safe. Of course, they were not. His soldiers slaughtered more than 7,000 Muslim men and boys who tried to flee. Hurem Sulic was one who miraculously survived the massacre. I tracked him down in the Bosnian-held town of Tuzla four months later. The Serbs said, don't look around. Then I heard a lot of shooting and bodies fell on top of me. They were the people standing behind me. I fell too. Here, he says, he saw Mladic one last time. He stood there and waited until they killed them. When they killed them, he got back in his car and left. After that massacre, the U.S. led a bombing campaign against Bosnian Serb military position and peace negotiations that eventually ended the fighting. Mladic became a wanted man and soon went into hiding. I never knew if I would see him again, the man with whom I'd stood on a Bosnian hilltop at the height of the war. But it was with deep satisfaction that I watched Mladic stand in the dock at The Hague to finally face the justice he so brutally denied others. America has called, calls him a war criminal, and under any kind of UN tribunal, he may have to be prosecuted. What does he think about that? And it's a tough question, but he's a tough man and he can answer it. Yes, yes, I can take it. I've taken more rough ones. I can take hers too. I defended my people, and only my people can judge me. And there's no greater honor than defending your people.